Some feel it's a morbid discussion, and people often put off talking about dying. But in addition to grief, death can also cause financial pain, so estate planning is crucial. Here to explain the importance of wills and trusts is Matt Osborne, the Wills and Trust Supervisor for Desert Schools Federal Credit Union. Great to see you. Thanks. We were just talking, and this is a topic that a lot of people, unfortunately, start very, very late. They come to you a little bit late. What is the biggest mistake that people make when deciding about about estate planning. I think the biggest mistake is that people put that topic off. Like you said, it's and it's coupled I think because that it is talking about a morbid topic. And I think the other issue with that is that there's a, a learning curve. Yeah. And so some people don't have the education and they don't seek the education to figure out what's going to be appropriate for their situation. And and for so many families it's a tough topic to have to begin with and then when you get it to it too late then it becomes fighting and yes. all the things that break apart families. You encourage us to be proactive. What documents do you suggest that we get prepared? Well, I think that uh, again it goes back to your life circumstance, but um, I think that if you're a, a young couple starting out with a new family, you certainly need to, to have a, a last will and testament in place to name guardians for your minor children. Um, it's very important that all of us have powers of attorney in place, financial and medical powers, so that if we c become uh, in a situation where we can't make decisions for ourselves, that there's people that we put, that trusted people to make right. decisions for us financially and medically. And these are decisions that we should be making when we have our sound mind Correct. and body, yes, right? Absolutely. So that we're not, you know, on our deathbed and then we're trying to make those crucial decisions. What's the difference between a last will and a revocable living trust? That's a loaded question. There's a, a lot of education that goes into that discussion, but in a nutshell, when I think of a last will and testament, I think of my last wishes or my last story. It's really a document that outlines what do I want to happen when I pass away. Whereas a living trust is um, a way where you set up a legal entity and it's a way where you can have somebody manage and control your estate for distributions after you and pass. If, and if somebody has already prepared a will or trust, because you know, I did it in my 20s and I sure. have to be honest with you, I need to go back and of course update because things have changed. I have kids now. What are the four things that you recommend we do if we already have done this in the past? Yeah, I think that it's important that every three to five years that you want to get your documents updated because um, circumstances change in your life, laws change, so every three to five years is a good uh, uh, point to come back and have your documents reviewed. Um, if you have a life-changing event, if there's a death in the family, you want to get your documents looked at right away. And, and certainly on a regular basis, you want to update your beneficiary designations on your financial accounts. And certainly if you've added any new real estate, uh, you want to make sure that that real estate is uh, coordinating with your documents. And these are updates, so we're not having to start from scratch, right? A lot of times it can be a simple update, yes. And how many times do people come to see you? Are you a pretty busy guy down there? We are pretty busy. Yeah. Desert, Desert Schools is, uh, has been offering this service for several years now, and we've served over 10,000 people. Wow. Uh, in, in creating plans for families. And I, I, I guess after they walk away, it, it does give them a little bit of Oh, they can breathe a little easier because they've Absolutely. taken care of their business. And, and that's the number one thing I hear is, I'm so grateful we got this done. It's been on my New Year's resolution list for five years, and yeah. they're, re they're really relieved that it's completed. And as, and as the largest credit union in Arizona, that community uh, partnership that you have with your, with your customers, how vital is that? It's, it's extremely vital. Desert Schools has been a, a, a solid foundation for over 75 years in the community, and having a, a trusted place people can come is... is uh, it, it, it's really nice that they can feel solid about having that relationship. Well, Maddie, this has been great information. Thank you so much for coming in. And we want to offer you this information as well. If you would like to seek out about getting a will and trust, and you just need a little, little bit of help, give Desert Schools Federal Credit Union a call. The number is right there on your screen, 602-433-7000. You can also visit their website, desertschools.org.